Hello again, Math 20-1s. In today's lesson, we are going to wrap up this unit of study on sequences and series. And we're going to do so by examining infinite geometric series. And specifically, we're going to take infinite geometric series and categorize them either into a divergent geometric series that's infinite or a convergent geometric series that is infinite. You can find this lesson on page 75 of your math work booklet. To properly set the lesson up, we do need to go through several of these investigations to arrive at an equation we can use to deal with uh, an infinite geometric series. So let's start off with this first one. David buys a pizza. He eats half of the pizza, then half of the remaining piece, then half the remaining piece, etc. Continuing in this way, it looks as though he will never finish the pizza because there will always be one half left of whatever you initially are starting with. A, explain in practice why this could not happen. Well, that's pretty obvious. Like if you take, keep taking a, a piece of pizza and you keep cutting it in half, eventually you're going to get to the point where like the slice is like so ridiculously tiny that like trying to cut it in half with like a knife is just not going to work. So I suppose I could just quickly summarize that. So let's say it would eventually become impossible to cut a very thin piece in half. B, represent the situation with a geometric series whose first term is one half. Okay, so the first term is one half. So that would be A is equal to one over two. And every time we're just cutting it in half. So what, what's retain, what we're retaining is just 50% or one half of the pizza. So your common ratio would also be one half. So to figure out the remaining terms in the series, uh, what we'd want to do is we take the first term and just start, start multiplying by the common ratio. Okay, we're going to represent it as a series. So I'll use plus symbols here. So we've got the second term in the sequence or the series. Take one half and multiply by one half. So this is multiplication of fractions, top times top, bottom times bottom, one times one is one, two times two is four. So you'd have one over four. And if you want to go again, uh, to get the third term in the sequence or the series, you would just take one over four and multiply by one over two. So that'd be one times one over four times two, which is eight. And then I'll do one more term here. Uh, one over eight times the common ratio be one times one, which is one, eight times two, which is 16. And then this would just continue on forever. Okay. So it, it didn't define like any end to this, hence why it's an infinite series. We just continue to cut this pizza in half, although practically this is not going to work. C, for the series, determine the value of A and R and find a formula for S of N. Well, we already did A and R. Okay. A is one half. R is uh, one half. So we'll say A is equal to R, which is equal to one half. And then find a formula for S of N. So we'll use the geometric series formula that has the first term, the common ratio, and the number of uh, terms in it. So we'll use S of N is equal to A. We can't use the one that has t of n because this the series never ends. There is no last term. So you have s of n is a, then a times r to the power of n minus one over r minus one. And we'll just uh, sub these numbers in. So this would then be equal to a, which is one over two, multiply by r, which is also one over two to the power of n minus one 
and then divide this by r minus 1, which would be 1 half minus 1. Okay, let's try to simplify this a little bit. So on the top, we have this 1 half, which is the value of a on the outside of the brackets. On the inside, we have 1 half to the power of n minus 1. And then in the denominator, we would have 1 half minus 1, which would be negative 1 half. And then what you can do is you can, you can uh, just divide these two terms, so the one, or these two uh, numbers, 1 half here and negative 1 half. So 1 half divided by negative 1 half would just be negative 1. So this would be equal to negative 1. And then we have 1 half to the power of n minus 1. Although I don't like having that negative 1 on the outside. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the distributive property and just multiply the negative times this and the negative times that. So what this would look like then for like a simplified formula is I would have S of n is going to be equal to I'm just going to switch the signs on the two of them here. So the negative one on the inside would turn into positive one. So you'd have positive one. And then we're going to put a negative sign in front of the one half to the power of n. Okay, and I'll just box that. And that's my simplified equation for s of n. Now, what D wants me to do is it wants me to determine for different values of n. So n represents the, 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 the term of interest in the, in the series. I want to figure out what the sum is based on the uh, adding a different number of terms together. Now, to do this efficiently, you can use the table feature in the graphing calculator, although I'm going to use the list feature. I mean, both accomplish the exact same thing. So... Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my calculator and I want to pull up a list. So the way to do this is I'm going to hit the button stat and then I'm going to go to edit. So I'll go back here and I'll write that down. So I want to go stat and then edit. Now, what this does is it brings up a bunch of lists, lists where I can end, input a bunch of values. So I have L1, I have L2, I have L3, I have L4, I have L5. We're just going to make use of L1 and L2. So in, in the place of L1, I'm going to write in all of my N values. So my N values go from 1 all the way to 10. I'm just looking at natural numbers. So if I go over here, I'm going to input uh, uh, 1 then two, then three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and then 10. And then I'm gonna move the cursor so it highlights above the L2, okay? So not in the actual list itself, but on like the name of the list, which is going to be L2. And I'm gonna write a mathematical formula that I can use, uh, that, that I'm going to write down here, that's going to get the calculator to automatically calculate what these sums are. Uh, so here's how it works. So your so S of n is going to be L2. Okay. So L1 is equal to n. S of n is equal to L2. So if we look at my equation here, I have S of n. This is the simplified equation is one minus one half to the power of n. But I'm going to replace the S of n and the n with these different uh the different variables that we're using based on the list. So here, in the place of L1, or the place of N, I'm going to write down L1. And in the place of S of N, I'm going to write down L2. So what this is going to do is it's going to tell me to calculate the values in L2, we're going to go 1, subtract, 1 half to the power of all values in L1. So I'm going to type that in to the uh, into the table here. Okay, so make sure that you're above L2. And if there's anything in it, just hit the clear button just to get rid of it. And I'm going to write that equation down. Okay, so that equation again is 1 minus 1 half to the power of, 
with the half button, little exponent button. And then I need to pull up L1 here. So to access L1, you can actually see it above the number one. If you have a calculator that has colors on it, it would be in blue. Uh, if it's a TI-84, to access that, just hit second one. Okay, hit the second button and then number one, and then it brings up L1. So what it's going to do now is it's going to take all the values in L1 and it's going to calculate its L2 value by using this equation here. And if I hit enter, it's going to do all of it for me immediately. Okay, all of it's done like instantly. Okay, let's summarize these values into the, the table in the workbooklet. So when S of N is one, we have 0 0.500. Then we have 0 0.7500 or 750. Then 0 0.875, 0 0.938, 0 0.969, 0 0.975, Zero point nine nine two zero point nine nine six zero point nine nine eight and then finally zero point nine nine nine. Now what D wants me to do is it wants me to plot these values as ordered pairs on this graph. So if I do that, uh, when n is one, which would be here, S of n would have a value of 0 0.5. When n is equal to 2, S of n has a value of 0 0.75, which is like somewhere about right here. When n is 3, it's 0 0.875. So 0 0.875 would be somewhere about here. When n is 4, it's going to be 0 0.938. When it's 5, it's 969. When it's uh, n equals 6, it's 984. Then basically the rest of them are just going to be extremely close to 1. So you might have like a point here. You might have a point there. Okay, They just keep getting closer and closer to the number 1. F. Now it says, it says uh, because uh, it's a set of natural numbers, don't join the points. It just means that we don't have an n value that's like 1.5. Okay, because you can't have like the 1.5th term in the sequence. F, it would appear from the grid that as n gets larger, the sequence of sums S1, S2, S3, all the way to Sn gets closer and closer to what value? So if you actually look at the shape of the graph here, the graph appears to be getting very, very close to a specific Sn value, but it doesn't actually ever get to it. And if you look at the graph here, you actually have like a horizontal asymptote that would be at S of N is equal to one. So it's getting extremely close to the number one. All the sums keep getting closer as you uh, add more terms into the uh, series, you start to get closer and closer to one. Now we refer to this as being a convergent infinite series. Because what I can see is as I incorporate more terms or uh, into the actual uh, into the actual sequence or into the series, I start to get a sum that gets closer and closer and closer and closer to one. And if I kept this list going on past 10, you would continue to get numbers that get closer and closer to one, but never actually get there. But there is a definitive number that they actually do approach. That's why we call it convergent. Okay. Convergent just basically means like it comes close to actually hitting a specific number. Now we say that the sum of the infinite geometric series one half plus one fourth plus one eighth is one, or that the sum to infinity of the series is equal to one. So again, if you just kept going on like for an infinity along the X axis here, you would continue to get closer to one, but you'd never actually quite get to it. And it does make a note here. It says, note that the sum of a finite number of terms of this series will never actually reach uh, one. Finite means that we'd actually stop it after a certain point. I mean, like, again, if we, if we stopped it after 10 points, we're at 0 0.999, I think. Okay, so we're very close to one, but not quite there. G. Explain with reference to the pizza why the sum of this infinite series should be one. Well, it just means that if you continue to if you continue to cut the pizza in half like over and over and over again, 
for an infinite period of time, eventually you would eat the whole thing. Okay. Eating the whole pizza would be a sum that's equal to one. So I'll write that down. David. continues to eat the pizza, we'll put in quotation marks, infinitely. So he, he infinitely keeps cutting the pieces in half and eating one of the parts. He will eventually eat. Well, I don't know if you can use the word eventually and, and infinitely together, but whatever. Okay. He will eventually eat the whole pizza, which means the sum after an infinite amount of time or an infinite number of pieces will be equal to one. So it converges to a value of one, which means over an infinite period of time, the pizza does get eaten. This is a convergent geometric series. Now we're going to look at a divergent one. So we have the infinite geometric series, two plus four plus eight plus 16, et cetera. And we're going to do the same thing again. We're going to identify the values of A and R, and then we're going to get a formula for S of N. So the value of A in this series would be two. The common ratio, again, we're just multiplying by two to get to the next term in the uh, end of the series. So that's also two. And we'll write down our formula for S of N. So S of N for a geometric series, it'd be A. And then we could have R to the power of N minus one over R minus one. So then this would be equal to A, which is two. And we'd have two to the power of N minus one over two minus one and then two minus one would just be one so we don't need to show anything for the denominator so this would just be two and you'd have two to the power of n minus one now we want to use the table feature again to uh, for different for a different number of terms in the series we want to find the di uh, the different sums so uh, once again, uh, in L1, I'm going to input, uh, for L1, I'm going to input the N value. So let's go back here. Uh, let's clear L2, though. So to clear L2, just go directly above it and hit the clear button and then hit enter. And it should get rid of all of them. So again, just go to highlight the L2 column and then clear and then hit enter. Now, we need to write down a different equation this time. So this time, the equation would be, looking up here, so S of N would be L2 would be equal to, we're going to have two and then two to the power of, well, L1 is N. So two to the power of L1, and then we're going to subtract one. So going to the calculator and L2 will now enter that. So we're going to write down L2 is two and then bracket two to the power of N and the value of N or the values in list one. So second, and then one, okay, get out of this denominator or get out of this exponent, I should say, and then subtract one. And then we get a bunch, a bunch of different values in the table. Okay, so let's write these down. So this would give you two, it'd give you six, it'd give you 14, it'd give you 30, gives you 62, gives you 120, uh, let's see, it was a, it was a 120, 120, yeah, 126, uh, 254, 510, 1022, and then 2046. Okay, that seems right to me. All right, now we'll quickly plot these on the graph and see what happens. So when n is one, uh, S of n is two, 
so that would be like they're uh, the grid lines are going up by tens here so a two would be like somewhere down at this spot somewhere down here uh when n is two we have a sum of six when n is three we have a sum of 14 which looks like about right here when it's four it's up to 30. so right here when it's five it's up to 62 which would be located here and then immediately after that we actually can't plot any more points on the grid because all the remaining points have a sum value that's bigger than uh, 100. So in comparison to the previous graph, on this previous one, we could see after a while that uh, the sum of the series started to converge to a particular value. So it was one in this situation. In this situation right here, that's not happening. Actually, the values are getting completely out of control. Like the next value is, is like even further away from the previous sum. So that's what we refer to as a divergent series, a divergent infinite series. As you add more and more terms into the series, the sum starts to get further and further away from like what the previous sum would have been. Okay? It does not converge to some kind of a finite value. I don't see that horizontal asymptote. So actually it doesn't have, it would actually have like an infinite sum. It doesn't converge to a specific value. So they say here, this series, this kind of series is divergent and does not have a sum to infinity. Well, I suppose the sum to infinity would just be, it would just be infinite because the numbers keep getting bigger and bigger and bigger. So what we've seen is that when we have a common ratio, that's one half, we get a convergent geometric series, an infinite one. And then when R is equal to two, we get a divergent uh, geometric series that's infinite. Now we're going to play, uh, play around with a few more values and then we'll eventually get to the equation we're going to use to solve problems. Okay, so we're going to look at four different types of R values. We'll take an R value that's less than one. We'll take an R value that's between negative one and zero, an R value that's between zero and one, and an R value that's bigger than one. Okay, so the one that's going to be less than one is going to be negative uh, negative two. Okay, so when R is less than one, they, they decided to pick negative two. When R is between negative one and zero, they're picking negative one quarter because the, if you convert that to a decimal, it would just be zero, negative 0 0.25. Between zero and one, uh, an R value of two thirds, which would be 0 0.6 repeating. And then when R is bigger than one, they pick an R value of R is equal to three. What we're gonna do is for these different values of R, uh, we're gonna take these different values of R and we're going to determine what the value of R to the power of N is. Now, it might not be clear why I'm doing this right now. Like why are we calculating R to the power of N? But it's going to be important when we get into an equation in a moment. Again, we're going to to we're going to use this result to derive the uh, convergent infinite sum equation. All right, so uh, we'll do the same thing again. So what we're going to do is uh, we're going to uh, plot some values into L one and L two. So uh, we're going to use once again. We'll use L1 for my values of N. Now the values of N are a little bit different here. They're not going up by one every single time. So we'll change this. So let's get rid of L2, clear it, hit enter. Okay, so this time around we're going up by, we have one, we have two, and then we have three, we have four, then we're going to 10, then we're going to 20, and then we're going to 100. Uh, erase these other values, okay? Just, just get rid of them. We don't uh, we don't want these values. So uh, just hit the delete button. That should get rid of it. Yeah. Hit delete. Hit delete. Hit delete. Even if we're not going to use those values, get rid of them. The only ones you want to have in L1 are uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 10, 20, and then 100. Okay. Now I want the calculator to do this work for me again. So for this first one here, uh, what we have is R is a value of negative two. And the equation I'm going to write in Okay, so L2, this is the value of R. 
So this would be equal to, well, r is negative 2 to the power of n, which is L1. Okay, so that's the equation we're going to input into L2. L2 is equal to negative 2 in brackets to the power of L1. So highlight L2, and then I'll put in brackets uh, L1. So that's right, not L1 yet. Negative 2 to the power of L1. Hit enter. And I get a bunch of numbers that look like these. So I'll go ahead and just uh, write them down. Uh, and I'm not going to write down all the digits here for the ones that start to get a bit bigger. So uh, what do we got? We have uh, negative 2. We have 4. We have a negative 8. We have 16. We have 1,024. Then I start to get into some pretty big numbers. So then I have uh, 1.05 times 10 to the power of 6. And then the final one is 1.3 times 10 to the power of 30. So that's a huge number. So it turns out if any time you have a common ratio that is a value that's less than negative one, and we use this case example here where R is equal to negative two, if R is less than negative one, this is what's eventually going to happen to the, the sum of the series as you start to approach infinity. The number is going to get humongous, okay? So in that case, you're actually going to have a divergent geometric series, okay? That'll occur if R is less than negative one. Well, now let's see what happens if R is negative uh, one over four. So in the place of L2, we're gonna write down L2, which is R to the power of N. R this time around is going to be negative one quarter. So negative one quarter raised to the power of N, raised to the power of L1. So let's go back here, go up, uh, let's clear this, hit enter. And then this time around, it's going to be L, L2 is equal to negative one over four. That's my common ratio. And we're gonna raise it to the power of N and the power of N is being stored in list one. So we hit second L1 and we calculate all these values. Oh, what happened here? Uh, go to, uh, it's not liking something. Let's see here. Let's clear this again. Wrong value rip. Okay. Okay, clear. Okay, let's try negative 0 0.25 to the power of L2 or L1, I should say. Okay, it's not liking something about this. I suspect it might know what it is just right now, but we could just calculate this by hand. So to calculate the first one, it would just be negative uh, 0.25 to the power of one. Uh, to calculate uh, th this value right here, you just put negative 0.5 to the power of two. I'll actually write the values in for you. So what this would be, is if you calculate this by hand, so if you actually just went to, uh, if you did go S of N is equal to negative one over four, and then to the, so I'm trying to figure out what's wrong, but it's okay, we don't need to worry about that right now. Okay, S of N is negative one over four, four to the power of N. So we're just going to plug in those different values of N. I'll just do it for you here. You can hand plug this into your calculator if you prefer to do that. So negative one quarter to the power of one would be 0 0.25. Uh, negative one quarter to the power of two would be 0 0.0625. I'll just round it, 0 0.063. Uh, then we get negative 0 0.016, then we get 0 0.004. Then actually, once we get to n is 10, we're gonna get numbers that are like 0 0.000. There might be some more digits right here, but you have 0 0.000, 0 0.000. 
So as you start to plug in bigger values of n, you're actually going to find that the series starts to get closer and closer to zero. So I'm going to write down it's convergent. Okay, it converges to this value of zero. Okay, let's try this trick right here. See if it actually works for like two thirds. So if I do plug in, otherwise we can just do it by hand again. So I have L2 is equal to R to the power of N, which would be two over three to the power of L1. Let's see if it'll actually do it this time. Uh, yeah, okay, I got it. Really doesn't like what I'm doing here. Okay, yeah, let's get rid of that. Okay, two over three to the power of x. Will I calculate it? No, it doesn't like it. Something about the fraction that's not liking very much. I think it's because eventually the number is getting closer and closer to zero and it's not liking that for some reason. Okay, but anyways, we can just simply calculate that again. So to calculate these different list values, you just use the equation s of n is equal to, this time around we're using a common ratio of two thirds two-thirds to the power of n. So two-thirds to the power of one would be two over three, which is a decimal would be like 0 0.667. Uh, two-thirds to the power of two would be 0 0.444. That'd be four-ninths. Oops, let's make that so it actually looks like a four. And you'd have 0 0.296, 0 0.198, 0 0.017 and then 0 0.000 and then once again 0, 0, 0. okay so this is converging to a value that's converging to a specific value it's getting closer and closer to zero it does have more digits than like uh, like it isn't exactly zero but uh, it gets closer and closer to it all right let's see if it actually works for this one so for L2, we're going to plug in 3 to the power of L1. Let's see what happens here. So go back to stat, go to edit, and then let's try L2 is 3 to the power of L1. It's going to let me do it this time. Okay. Okay. Yeah, it's weird. I guess when it's between negative one and between one, it's not letting me uh, uh, calculate it. Again, I just I, I wonder if it just has to do with it getting closer and closer to zero. Uh, all right, so let's write these numbers down. So we have uh, three, we have nine, we have 27, we have 81, we have 59,049. We have 3.49 times 10 to the, what was it? 3.49 times 10 to the nine, and then 5.2. I think that was times 10 to the 47. Yeah, times 10 to the 47. So this one, as you add more terms into the series, the sum actually just gets out of control. It's nowhere near being convergent to a value. So it would be divergent. Okay, now it says complete the following statements based on your observations in A. As N gets larger and larger, because that's what's happening as we go down the chart, the sequence is convergent and approaches the value of zero if... Well, our two situations where that happened was when, when R was negative one quarter and when R is two thirds. Okay, so that's where we got a conversion series. So when R is negative one quarter and when R is two over three. The sequence is divergent. So it's not even, it's, it's like the, it's not approaching any value specifically. In fact, the values are getting like just crazy large. So when R is negative two and then when R is three. Now, we'll be a bit more general about this because now we want to actually fall into these different categories. So when R was negative two, we are less than negative one. When R was between uh, negative one quarter, it's between negative one and zero. And when R is two over three, it's between zero and one. 
when r was three, it was bigger than one. So we can summarize this now. Uh, as n gets larger and larger, r of n gets cl closer and closer to zero. So that's when it's convergent. And it does this when either, if you look back up here, when r is less than one or greater than zero, or when r is greater than zero or less than one. So we can actually combine both these together and we could say as long as r is between negative one, so it's bigger than negative one and it's less than a positive one. So r is less than negative one and it's bigger, uh, sorry, r is uh, greater than negative one and less than positive one, then the series approaches zero, okay? r to the power of n gets closer to zero. Now, uh, we can also write that down as an absolute value. We can say that uh, if the absolute value of r is less than one, then it gets closer and closer to zero. Again, if you take the absolute value of that number, the absolute value of negative one would just be positive one. Uh, as r to the power of n uh, gets uh, yeah larger and larger, in fact, like the, the, the sum is actually infinite and that happens when R is less than negative one or when R is bigger than one. And if we wanted to write that down in terms of an absolute value, you can just simply say if the common ratio, the absolute value of it is bigger than one, then we're going to end up getting a series that is just getting completely out of control. And now we're gonna use this information to get an equation for an infinite series. Okay, so let's do that now. If you look at the equation for the sum of a geometric series, okay, the one we've been using quite a lot is S of n is equal to a r to the power of n minus one over r minus one. But here's the thing though, uh, if the absolute value of r is less than one, so that's when r is between negative one and one, then what ends up happening is the value of r to the power of n, it gets very close to zero, okay? It, it approaches zero. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna take this equation here and in the place of r to the power of n, I'm gonna replace it with that zero. So if I do that, I would then have s to the s of n is a, now r to the power of n, as long as uh, r absolute value of r is less than one, so we're between negative one and we're between positive one, this would then be zero. Okay, so we're gonna get rid of this right here and turn it into a zero minus one over r minus one. This would then turn into negative one times a would be negative a. And then we'd have r minus one. Don't really like having the negative on the top here. So what I can do is I can move the negative to the bottom. But if I do move the negative to the bottom, it has to apply to both the r and it has to apply to the negative one. So moving the negative down here, you have to multiply the r by negative, and you have to multiply the negative one by a negative. So what this would do then is this actually gives you the sum of a convergent infinite geometric series, which is S of infinity is equal to one minus r. And this is only valid if the common ratio, the absolute value of the common ratio is less than one, okay? absolute value of the common ratio that's less than one means that the common ratio is between one and it's negative one between positive one. And that's the equation we have here. You'll also find this on the formula sheet. So this is the sum of an infinite geometric series uh, that is convergent. Okay, so we should clarify this is one that's convergent. And it is only convergent if the absolute value of R is less than one. So you have the sum of this infinite series would be a over one minus r. So just to summarize this quickly, so geometric series, you can break into two categories. You can break it into a finite geometric series or an infinite one. Finite geometric series are the ones we dealt with in the previous lesson. So those are ones that like they do have a definitive end to it. Like they would have like, for example, the last term is term number 100, okay? So it does have an end point. In which case, if it does an endpoint, you can use all these different equations to solve. An infinite geometric series, there's two types of them. There's a convergent one and there's a divergent one. 
divergent geometric series are ones where as the n value gets bigger, so you add more and more terms to the series, uh, the series does not approach a specific value. This will happen if the common ratio, the absolute value of the common ratio is bigger than one. Okay. Then uh, you're going to get a divergent series. Now, if your uh, uh, common ratio is between negative one and one, or the absolute value of it is less than one, then you're going to get a kind of convergent infinite geometric series. And what that means is that it approaches a specific value. In terms of what what uh, what that value is it approaches, well, we can calculate it by using this equation here. Okay, the sum of the infinite series will tell you which number it's actually going to approach. So all we need to know is what the first term is in the common ratio, and then we can use it. But again, this is only valid if the absolute value of R is going to be less than one. It also makes a note right here, what happens if R is plus or minus one? Well, that's a problem because if you plug it into the equation, you'd be dividing by zero then. Okay, so the equation wouldn't be valid. So we just say it doesn't converge to a particular value. In fact, it's not really even a geometric series. The common ratio is one. You're just you're just staying at the exact same number. Uh, like you're just multiplying by one every single time. The terms in the se in the the sequence wouldn't be changing whatsoever. Okay, let's do a few examples of this. So it says determine the common ratio for each of the following geometric series and state whether the sum uh, whether a sum to infinity actually exists. Okay, so let's calculate the common ratio. So what am I doing right here? To go from 1 to 1 over 3 to 1 over 9, what am I multiplying every single term by? You're multiplying by 1 third, okay? R would be equal to 1 over 3. 1 times 1 over 3 be 1 third, and then 1 over 3 times 1 over 3 would be 1 times 1, which is 1. 3 times 3, which would be 9. So the common ratio would be 1 third. Now, it wants to know, is it convergent or divergent? Well, since... The absolute value of R would be equal to one third, and that is less than one. It means that the infinite series is convergent. Okay, we could calculate what that number is, but we're not going to do that quite yet. How about this one? You have one, negative five, 25. So what are you doing to get from one term to the next? Well, you're multiplying by negative five. One times negative five is negative five. Negative 5 times negative 5 is positive 25. Now, if you take the absolute value of this number, say so take the absolute value of R, that would be equal to 5. Now, because the absolute value of R is bigger than 1, that means that the series is divergent. Okay, the sum of the series is divergent. Okay, this one here, what am I doing? How am I going from 2 to 1 to 1 half? Well, it looks like I'm dividing by two, but in terms of multiplication, what I'd be doing is I'd be multiplying by uh, one half and specifically negative one half. Whoops. Two times negative one half would be negative two over two, which is negative one. Negative one times negative one half would be positive uh, one half. So since the absolute value of R would be one over two. And because the absolute value of the common ratio is less than one, this would be a convergent geometric series. Okay, second example here. It says the first term of a geometric series is two. And the sum to infinity is four. And it wants me to determine the common ratio, which is R. All right, so we use, so we do have a convergent sum here, in which case we can use the equation S of infinity is equal to, this is the one we derived in the previous slide, one over, or sorry, A over one minus R. Subbing the numbers in, we give you four is equal to two over one minus R. All right, I need to solve for R. So I'll do that by putting it in brackets and then cross multiplying, moving it up to that side because the left-hand side only has a single term. So this would then be four times one minus R. 
is equal to two. And if you use a distributive property, four times one is four, four times negative R is uh, negative four R. And that'd be equal to two. I want to solve for R here. So I'm going to get uh, negative four R by itself. So minus four, minus four. And then I would have negative four R would be equal to two minus four is negative two. Divide both sides of that equation by negative four, divide by negative four. And that would give you a fraction, which so this would cancel off here. And then you'd have R is equal to negative two over four would reduce to a fraction of one half. The two negatives would just cancel off and you're left with one half. And this makes sense. If we have a convergent uh, series, uh, you need to have an R value that is between negative one and positive one, which is the case here. Last one it says write the repeating decimal 0 0.07 as an infinite geometric series. So that's written in bar notation, 0 0.07 repeating. So we could write this as 0 0.0. I'll, write, I'll show a few of the digits, 7, 7, 7, dot, dot, dot. Now, what I could do is I could write this down as 0 0.07 plus 0 0.007 plus 0 0.0007 and so on. If you put these three numbers together, you would get uh, 0 0.0777. So I suppose what I'm doing is I'm just separating like all like the individual, uh, uh, like the individual placeholders. Okay, so this is my series, 0 0.0700007. Uh, and what I could also do is you can write these as fractions. So if I want to write 0 0.07 as a fraction, uh, that's like 7%. 7% uh, would be 7 over 100. 0 0.007 would then be 7 over 1,000. So you divide by a slightly bigger uh, a number with an extra zero just to account for that extra zero there. And then this one would be 7 over 10,000. Okay, so that's how I could write uh, the repeating decimal number 0 0.07 repeating as an infinite uh, geometric series. Now, B wants me to find the sum of this infinite series. And, and it turns out this is actually going to allow me to convert this repeating decimal number into a fraction. So to calculate the sum, all we need to know is two things. We need to know what the first term is. So the first term is 7 over 100. And the common ratio R is what are we doing every single time here? Well, uh, to go from 0 0.07 to 0 0.007, we're dividing by 10. Dividing by 10 is the same thing as multiplying by one over 10. And you can see that with the fractions, if you multiply each of these by one over 10, we just keep increasing, uh, we keep adding a zero to the denominator of these fractions. Okay, now let's use the infinite uh, sum equation for a convergent series. So we have S of infinity is A, over one minus R. So this would be equal to, okay, A would be seven over 100 divided by one minus R, R is one over 10. Now I wanna simplify the denominator here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna rewrite the one. So it has a common denominator of 10. So this would be 10 over 10 minus one over 10. And then this would be seven over 100 is equal to, and we'll put this in brackets as well, 10 over 10 minus one over 10 would be nine over 10. Now I wanna simplify this, but I've got a bunch of fraction signs. So what I can do is replace just the middle fraction sign with a division symbol. So this would become seven over 100 divided by nine over 10 which would be seven over 100, multiply by 10 over nine, multiply by the reciprocal. Uh, I can simplify a little bit before I multiply. Okay, 10 over 100 would reduce to one over 10. 
And then if I multiply this out, I would get S of infinity would be equal to seven times one is seven. And then 10 times nine would be 90. So actually use the sum of an infinite geometric series to take a repeating decimal and turn it into a fraction. And we can double check that's right. We go back here and write down seven over 90. This would be equal to 0 0.07 repeating. All right, so that's it for this lesson and for this unit actually. And you can complete starting on page 79. numbers one do a through i and then do three five six and seven and that is it for this unit on sequences and series